Talk by Charles Bukowski. Listen, he told me, I wanted to escape the cruelties, which down and murder most of the people in this contemporary haphazardness which we call existence. Tell me about it, I answered. Well, the dogs of the years were after me, and the music was bad, and the food was poisoned, and the jails were overcrowded. Yes? Yes. I needed to find a place, an uninformed place, a place with walls, of quietness, a place with no communication, no priests, no prostitutes, no politicians, no palaver of any kind. No women? I asked. Not, he said, if at all possible. So you had a plan? I asked. Yes and no, he went on. I swilled countless bottles against the constant dread of waking up in the morning, chained to nowhere. I, helpless to prayer and magic, drank enough booze to kill half a dozen healthy oxen, but I still awakened, my listless life ticking away, no chance for the heart, you know. No chance. Yes, forget that or go mad, better to end up in a cheap room in some city somewhere. No pity in that. No, just a general and engaging weariness. There's that. Yes, so I'm hung there, a voice stuffed with cotton meanwhile. Meanwhile? Working upon methods to slide the knife gently home, as the sweet girls in gingham dresses suck at the roots of monsters. You've got it, he said, but offer me no advice, please. Advice to the helpless, I suggested, could be the terrifying invention of sadistic pigs fat in their own dowdy juice. Yes, he said, adding knowledge to knowledge is insufficient. That's why, I said, the paid healers can seldom reach the patient. Meaning, he said, that the patient could be right and damned properly right within what is termed his madness. Who the hell knows? Nobody. So, I was hung there in that room with just the desire to drink and note the peeling wallpaper, and that rug eaten away by the footsteps of the trapped who had already passed through. Those sad and bartered people. Yes, I almost visualized them, one at a time, an old woman with a gray shawl about her neck, a middle-aged drunk, a repressed child rapist with a long yellow nose, a man with one eye, a young girl who sometimes imagined she was a swan. Hmm. I could almost see them one at a time walking across that rug or opening and closing those dresser drawers. Horrible. It was horrible. Limited and cloying, as close to zero as could be fathomed. What could they do? Not even scream. What could they do? The immensity of existence. It was like being a roach of nowhere, crawling along. Doing what? Opening a drawer. Looking for what? A handkerchief? A gun? Something useful? Who the hell knows? For me, humanity has failed worse than I had, but I was sad for them. As for me, I only wanted a space to rest in. A tiny blinking waterfall of temporary immunity. Was it there? Not quite. That room connected me with the hateful and my love for the hateful. It was like shit in a sewer, going the way of all waste. You never laugh much, do you, buddy? Oh yes, I laugh, but let me go on. Talk about being nuts. One gets dumb. Let's go. It's like a protective covering. I was on this bed, and there were bars in, in the headboard, and I fumbled around with the bars. The bed must have been half a century old. How many bodies had it slept? How many had died? The fingers found hardened cakes of gum. I stretched there on that lumpy mattress and flicked off the hardened cakes of long stop chewing. It was like peeling away the agonizing indecencies of that space between the birth of those bodies and what had finally become of them. A flake playing with flakes. Yes, I cleared off the backs of all the bars of the headboard. The gum was gone and they were gone. How true. Then I noticed the paint, yellow paint, some of it cracked away with gray beneath and I began to chip away at the paint, getting flecks of yellow beneath my fingernails. Not too exciting. Well, it was a dream state, a manner of being. It was the perfect place, easy going. Without such pauses, nothing can go on. A man, a woman, a flea, a mouse, a dog. Well, I don't know about that. So there I was, peeling gum and paint. I was the hero. 
of a brutal father and an indifferent mother, I was the aftermath of that, in this strange room of nowhere. I felt and sniffed and peeled at the death of others as I arranged for my own. Yes? Yes. But, meanwhile, there were certain propri proprieties to attend to, and three or four days later I was sitting across from a woman who was very properly dressed and schooled, cool to my own ultimate perfection. I thought you had quit the ladies. She had this marvelous desk, so long, so wide, so finely varnished, and she smiled at me and said, There are gaps in your record of employment. What were you doing then? Oh, oh. Within the context of your imagination, I told her, nothing. Oh, oh. We will consider your application, she told me, and I answered, I consider it already considered. And... I went back to that room. I liked that room, although there were only two days left on the rent. The rivers of immensity only flow one way. They flow toward you. Life doesn't give it to you, and death can't take it away. That's very nice, I said, but now let me tell you my story. Oh, oh, he said. And then I proceeded.